I'm in a monkey movie club. Monkeys movies. It's a club with both of those things. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, what's going on? This is the first episode of Monkey Movie Club. You may be asking yourself, what is the Monkey Movie Club? Uh, well, first off, I should introduce myself. I am Chimp Guy, uh, founder of Chimp Guy Productions, the channel that you're watching this on right now. I like to make stuff. Uh, I've made some horror short films with my friends that you can check out on the channel. Um, I've also done some like movie review TikToks on my TikTok page, which is at Chimp Guy Productions. Uh, you can check those out. I'm going to start posting there a little more. I'm going to start posting on this YouTube channel a little more, hopefully with Monkey Movie Club. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, Monkey Movie Club is a club I decided to create with my friends where we watch movies. No, they do not specifically have to be about monkeys. I am just the chimp guy, you see. Um, and it is my club. And what we do is every week we watch a new movie and we talk about it, kind of like a book club, but we do it every freaking week. And we're not nerds, dude. We don't read. If a movie with subtitles is the movie of the week, I'm not reading them, okay? I'm watching the movie. And if I don't understand, that's their fault for not being able to make it in English, okay? So, sorry about that. Um, what we do is I run the club. So every week I come up with a theme. And uh, everybody submits a movie that goes along with that theme. For instance, one week, I've been doing this for like a couple months now, and one week uh, I did monkey movies in the spirit of the monkey movie club, and you would recommend something like King Kong or I don't know, Dunstan Checks In, which is a movie about an orangutan checking into a hotel, I believe, or Most Valuable Primate, MVP, the Air Bud Pictures Company made a movie about a chimpanzee that can play hockey. They actually made three movies with the chimpanzee. Anyways, that's the nature of this club, okay? And this past week, I, I just wanted to start doing videos where I, I, I was having these discussions with these friends that are in this club, but I felt like I always had more to say. And I didn't want to oversaturate the conversation with my shitty opinions. You know, I wanted everybody to feel comfortable to talk and not feel like I made this club for me to talk about movies, which is why I did make the club, okay? But I don't, I'm a good friend, okay? I want to hear what they have to say. I don't want to just blow my load all over the conversation. So that's why I'm here. Here, I'm going to blow my load of conversation all over you watching this. I'm going to talk about the movies a little more in depth than I do in these discussions. Um, so anyways, let's just freaking, let's just freaking jump right into it, why don't we? Um, this past week was the theme. I was really proud. I'm, I make graphics, too, for uh, my friends. I'm just such a good freaking host, don't you guys think? I'm just, like, so freaking talented and, like, so freaking kind to, like, do all this in my free time. I'm just so generous of a person. Well, I make these graphics, okay, and I think they're pretty cool sometimes. Some have sucked, but I'll throw up the graphic right here. Um, the theme was, as you can see, Alien Invasion. I kind of did it uh, because aliens were kind of in the news with the whole Mexican alien, which are probably just mummified children uh, that we saw on the news. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. There's a lot of great alien movies out there. There's uh, E.T., freaking Steven Spielberg, one of, the, one of the best guys to ever do it. Um, or Alien by Ridley Scott, which is a great flick. I love that one. And even, like, my favorite horror movie ever, like, John Carpenter's The Thing, dude. Like, that's about a shape-shifting alien. 
And uh, so, yeah, we I, I put that theme out and everybody submitted their films and we all voted. Not to get too in depth with the rules of my club, but everybody gets two votes, and you can vote for yourself if you feel like it. But that you know that counts as one of your votes. Don't mind the Coke Zero break. I recommended John Carpenter's The Thing. It's almost it's getting closer to Halloween. I felt like let's do a spooky little one. I guess that's the thing. Alien movies are usually spooky, like. You do have the heartwarming ones like uh, E.T. or John Carpenter's, I think it's called Starman, where Jeff Bridges is a shape-shifting alien, but he's nice. Um, but most of the alien movies you hear about, they're not very nice little guys. Like uh, War of the Worlds, uh, which Spielberg, you know, remade with Tom Cruise. War of the Worlds, they're not very nice. Um, the Thing, that thing is not very nice. It's trying to eat you. It's trying to absorb you into its body and be you. That's what it's trying to do. That's not very nice. Um, yeah, alien. You know, it, 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 that's not a nice little guy. It doesn't even. It doesn't even talk. It just like kills you with his tiny mouth. Neither of those two mouths talk. It just. It gets you, and you know, it gives aliens a bad stigma uh, because the movie that I'm going to talk about that won the Monkey Movie Club title for Alien Invasion was District 9. District 9, the Neil Blomkamp picture. Sorry, I got cats running around. District 9 is interesting because it poses the question, what if the aliens came and we were the dicks? You know? Um, which is true because, uh, I mean... In human history, we tend to be dicks to people that are different than ourselves. And these aliens are different. They speak differently. Uh, they look differently. They look terrifying. I mean, your, your, little, your little apartheid metaphor here, Mr. Blomkamp, is a little wary when you make the aliens look so fucking terrifying. Like... I, I hope I would have a bit more empathy for these aliens than the people in the movie actually do, but I digress. Let's talk a little bit about District 9. Um, District 9 came out in 2009. Uh, it was Neil Blomkamp's first feature film, I believe, and Peter Jackson produced it. Mr. Peter Jackson, you know, the, the Lord of the Rings guy. Uh Peter Jackson is an interesting fellow that I don't know a whole lot about. I know that he made some horror pictures back in the day, like, uh, what's it called, Brain Dead or Dead Alive. Um, I know a lot of people like that movie, a lot of people in the horror community. Um, but yeah, Mr. Mr. Blomkamp got a little $30 million budget and uh, dropped my pencil there. And he made district nine so the origin of district nine he mr blomkamp made a short film called alive in joburg it's about it's about six minutes long you can find it for free on youtube go watch it uh it, it's good uh it's a little short film that is shot like a documentary similar to how the beginning parts of district nine are and it's like interviewing people talking about the aliens, but not really interviewing a lot of the aliens. It's like people talking about why they don't like the aliens and why they think they're violent and what they do to uh, prevent anything bad happening to them or their business. Like there's a business owner in the short who like he like sells food and he keeps a bulletproof vest on and has a gun on him. And he's like, yeah, if I don't have this, the the aliens are just going to come and rob me and take my meat so I you know I need to or shoot me I need to protect myself and that's a lot of uh I, f I feel like that's you know that that talks a lot about uh, the kind of paranoia we see nowadays I mean it's throughout time there is a lot of paranoia around the less fortunate, you know, like they're like, don't go to that neighborhood because you, you'll get robbed. There's a lot of scary stuff there. And, uh, you know, uh, robbery 
comes out of a place of need, you know, like you don't see people who have uh, an above the living wage job, uh, health, health insurance, a home, a car, you know, those people are a little less likely to rob somebody than let's say an alien that randomly finds itself on a planet where the inhabitants of the planet aren't helping them out really in any way at all. Like not giving them access to food, not giving them access to like clean shelter, just kind of throwing them into a ghetto and being like, okay, you live here now, I guess. Good luck. Like I know it takes place in South Africa, but that's like people talk about the American dream. And it'd be kind of hard, like, if these aliens landed, from my limited experience as an American, it would be kind of hard to be dropped into America. And this is what a lot of immigrants go through, like uh, Mexican-American immigrants. Uh, they, They come and they get jobs and they're exploited maybe more than uh, a documented citizen because people can't exploit them because they're desperate and they'll take anything. They need anything. Anyway, uh, yeah, you either know, you, you know, whatever. You see this kind of stuff all around the world. And uh, I think it's interesting, like, I think the short is a bit more cohesive in its, like, tackling of these themes than maybe the feature. But I don't entirely blame that on... Neil Blomkamp, you know, like obviously you can see in that short that this is the idea he wanted to express and talk about and like put to film. And when a big studio and Peter Jackson come to you and give you $30 million, they're obviously going to have the right to tell you like what you can and can't do with some parts of the movie or what what they want to what they want to insert into it. Like, there's a lot of action in the movie. And don't get me wrong. The action rocks. Like, I'm a fan of the action. I, I love I love how the film starts with this, like, documentary style, similar to the short, Alive in Joburg, and uh, the use of handheld and blah, blah, blah. And they carry that into the action. You know, there's there's a lot of really cool handheld sequences where they can achieve some like pretty impressive special effects like for handheld, you know, I I don't know what the technology was back in 2009 for that. I mean, you can obviously put, put some films to reference with it, but I I think it looks pretty impressive, especially with how shaky some of the scenes are. Like it looks like, you know, someone holding their cell phone, like recording this alien exploding this guy with his laser gun. And I'm like, you know, when you put it into that, you you establish the the film and you try and ground it with the world by making that whole opening portion like documentary style. And then when you transfer the way you shot this documentary stuff into the more fiction, like this is not a person holding a camera, you, you just want to help it helps convince the audience of what they're seeing is real like whenever you're doing some pretty unreal stuff like exploding a guy with a big laser gun you know anyway yeah uh i'm a fan of all that stuff but yeah like i was saying the the message can get a little lost whenever you've got to the studio is making you turn this into a more conventional movie you know it's like We've got to have the action stuff. We've got to have, we've got to have the the human hero. Yeah, well, you know, he he's he's a dick, and then he's got to have his redemption arc. He's got to be the hero at the end of it, you know, because that's what audiences like to see. That's what a studio is like. This is what has worked. This is what you need to do with it. You can't make your six minute documentary, fake mockumentary, into an hour and a half movie with thirty million dollars. No, you have to do more. You've got to, you know. So I get it. I I don't fault the man. I fault the studio. But I, I'm still glad that District Nine exists. I think it's, I think it's a good movie, and I I think it might get people thinking, like your dad, you know, like hey, it's kind of fucked up how they treated those aliens, you know. And it's like, oh, really, dad? Isn't it kind of fucked up 
you know, what you say about the stuff you see on Fox News about, you know, blah, 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 blah. anyway, I won't get into it too much. But yeah, um, it's a good flick. I like it. I'm, I'm a fan of District 9. I'm a, fl- I'm a fan of Blomkamp. I actually have a funny story. When I was, I think I was in high school or something, whatever year Elysium come out, came out, Elysium is famously the uh, Matt Damon, the Matt Damon starring, you know, Neil Blomkamp film that he made, I think in like the 2010s. And it also has like uh, its whole metaphor about society and blah, 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 and about how the rich people are set up and the poor people suffer. And uh, it, it, I, I, my story, sorry, I went to the movies with like my mom and sister, I think. And uh, it was one of those kind of things where I was like, hey, they're going to go watch this. Like, uh, I don't know, Pitch Perfect 2 or whatever was out at the time. And I said, hey, can I go see Elysium by myself while you guys watch that? It was around the same time. And my mom was like, sure, because Elysium was PG-13. And I had seen the trailers and I was like, "Uh, you know, I'm interested in that. I liked sci-fi and uh, I go see it. And I think I really liked it when I saw it. Um, And it was kind of one of the first movies that I remember when I was younger, like making me think about social issues like that and like applying those kind of issues in the sci-fi film to the real world. So Blomkamp's work like did that for me when I was in high school or whatever. Like, and I think that's really cool. Um, and also uh, props to you Blomkamp for making that PG 13. You could have made it R like district nine, but because it was PG 13, I was able to go see it by myself. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, gave, gave access to, to people like me. But that being said, Elysium was not, you know, I've revisited it since. It's not the best. It's not better than District 9. Um, But it feels like a Blomkamp movie. I think I also saw Chappie in high school, which was Blomkamp's movie about the robot police force and like the rogue robot who broke out of it. It's got like Hugh Jackman or some shit. Um, That was all right, I think. I, I think even when I saw it when I was younger, I was like, oh, Okay, that was fine. I think I rented it from the fucking red box that came to town and whatever. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, watch District 9. It's it's rad. It's, it's a fun time. It kind of loses, it kind of loses its feeling of like the heart and soul of the movie at the end. I don't, I don't want to spoil it too much if you want to go watch it, but you know. It's a it's a solid sci-fi flick, uh, and I like the design all around. And oh my god, funny <laughs> funny story! Every week I I stream the movie to my friends, and we watch it all together uh, that are in the movie club. And I uh, apparently had put on a version that did not give any of the aliens subtitles. And I did not realize that the aliens had subtitles. I thought the movie was purposefully keeping us in the dark about what the aliens were saying. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like these aliens speaking a language that nobody knows, like why would the audience know? And I, after we watched the movie, we were talking about it. And I was like, I kind of liked that. I liked how it kept the audience in the dark about what the aliens were saying, blah, blah, blah. My friend was like, I don't know. I, I would have liked some of the context for some of the scenes. And I was like, okay, whatever. Well, then one of our friends in the movie club that had seen the movie before was like, I think the aliens are supposed to have subtitles. I don't know what version you guys watched, but they're supposed to have subtitles. And we were like, what? So we looked it up and yeah, whatever version I watched, I don't know if it was a director's cut or what, but whatever version I watched just and showed to my friends just didn't have any subtitles for the aliens for the aliens like that's and i was like how does that whatever i still like without subtitles for any of the aliens including like the main alien uh character that you're supposed to like empathize with i still like kind of understood what he was doing and his intentions and i was still like moved by him and i was like wow that's like that's really powerful that this like cg performance like 
moved me, and I didn't even know what the fuck he was saying, and I was supposed to. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, that was District 9 for Alien Invasion. And I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys. I gotta be honest. I watched two other Alien movies. And I want to talk about them. Okay? Uh, Alien flicks are good. These are two movies that I had never seen before. And I'm going to get into our next one, which is a movie that just came out recently and is receiving a lot of buzz. And that movie is No One Will Save You. It is on Hulu. I believe it's a Hulu original. It premiered on Hulu. And I'm going to be honest, I was not crazy about it. Yeah, and this movie has been getting a, a ton of press. Like, fucking Stephen King tweeted about it. Stephen King tweeted about it and was like, this is the best. This is the best fucking movie I've ever seen. That, that's my Stephen King impression. And then uh, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro uh, tweeted about it and was like, guys, this is the best fucking movie I've ever seen, too. And I was like, Jesus, I got to watch this fucking movie. Like, obviously, this is very, this is a very riveting movie. So I'll put, uh, I'll put a, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit spoiler free and then I'm going to get into spoilers. Spoiler free. I was not crazy about it. You know, uh, I, I guess I had built up this hype in my own head about the movie, but man, I was not feeling it. Uh, I, I like the main actress. I've seen her. I've seen her in some stuff. I, her name is missing from my head at this moment. This is her. Um, but man, I, it took a while to, to get where it was going. And it's like, it's trying to say something, but it's a bit, me you know what? Go see it, go see it and come back to this video. I'm going to get into spoilers. Um, I just, I just got to talk about it. Okay. So when I was on Twitter looking at the reactions of this movie, I was seeing people being like, this is amazing. This is the most original, creative, best movie I've seen in a long time. And I was like, damn, okay. Um, I'm going to watch this. They were like, it's an alien home invasion movie and I love it. And it's the best alien movie in the past decade. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this is a lot of fucking praise. And I saw some tweet where somebody said, yeah, there's only one line of spoken dialogue in the whole movie. And I'll be honest, at first I was like, oh, brother. Oh shit, this is what it's going to be. But you know, I was going to I was going to I just didn't want it to play too much on its gimmick. I didn't want it to rely too much because like the more that I looked at tweets of people talking about, it, I should have just got off Twitter and went and watched the movie. I watched it that night, but the tweets that I was seeing were people like, "Yeah, it's so powerful what they're able to achieve with with only one line of dialogue. And I was like, okay, it's all going to... So then you read that, I, or I read that, and then I go sit down and watch the movie, and I was in my own head about it, but the whole time I was like, what's the one line of dialogue going to be? What's this line of dialogue? I got to know. I got to know, you know? So um, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, uh, they're doing story, you know, the movie is doing storytelling without talking, you know, which is doable. I mean, it's like, it's a motion picture. You can tell a story with a bunch of pictures without dialogue per se. My problem with this movie specifically is that it is trying so hard to not make her talk so that it'll pay off with the one line she actually says like she is being chased by fucking gray aliens and the whole time it's like the movie is filled with guttural noises of just uh, ooh, uh, ooh, because it's trying to like pad out the audio it's like you know it's audio design and it's trying but it does it it's doing that for like an hour because there's no dialogue and so it got really distracting. 
to to me personally. This is a personal thing too. You know, it was just like anytime she did so, it was like, uh, huh, ooh, ah, ooh, and I was getting sick of it. I was like, if I saw a gray alien in my fucking kitchen. I would probably be like, oh my God, you know, like I would, (laughs) I would make, I would talk to the alien probably. I'd probably talk to the alien. I'd probably try and say something. She doesn't try to talk to the aliens at all. She just, spoiler, stabs him in the fucking head. (laughs) Like not once, like she comes face to face with the alien and granted the alien's a little aggressive. It's like trying to come up on her, but she's not once through that whole, the whole time. She's not once like, Hey, stop. Oh, get off. You know, like, Oh, what the fuck are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like, no, she's, Oh, oh. And the whole time I'm sitting there and I'm like, I would say something to this alien. You know, I would be like, Hey, get the fuck off me. E.T., fuck off. You know, I would, I would, whatever. It was just bugging me, okay? I don't, I'm not going to hold that too much against me. I just think it was trying so hard to be like, yeah, we're not going to make her talk until she says her one line. We're going to do everything to make her not talk. And in the beginning of the movie, it's like setting up that she fucked over an old friend of hers. She's like writing a letter and is like, I'm so sorry for what I did. I will, I will never forgive myself. And she's writing these letters and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like walking downtown and everybody fucking hates her. Like everybody's looking at her and they all fucking hate her. Well then it's like, she, I don't know how, but it, it establishes this friend's last name and then she's walking through town and she, oh, this is after the, her first encounter with the alien. She goes to town and she's going to the police station to report this. And she runs into the parents of her friend. And we know that because we established her friend's last name and she sees the name tag of the police officer and the name tag is the same last name. So you're like, oh, okay, this is a girl's parents. They both freeze like they all freeze. They don't say a word. She's about to say a word. And then the mom fucking spits on her. And I was like, Oh shit. I was like, damn, you really fucked this friend over. I don't know what you did, but they're pissed at you, dude. I've never had anyone spit on me. You know, that's, that's a big deal. That's like old timey fucking, I hate you. Like, damn. Okay. She might as well have taking her fucking glove off and slapped you in the face with it dude like this bitch hates you (laughs) you know and uh anyway i think she even like ends up not reporting it to the police because she's like so embarrassed that she just fucking leaves the police station whatever i'm not uh, and so still nobody has talked during this movie and i'm like nobody in town wants to talk to her she's not talking to anybody she deals with all this shit with the aliens and Okay, so let's talk about the aliens a little bit. They're all, like, computer-generated aliens, which was a little disappointing. I thought it would have been dope to, like, get a few shots of, like, a dude in a gray suit. Like, that would have been cool. Or, like, you know, play with play with the darkness a bit more. It, it, the movie looks very digital. You know, we're in that digital age where a lot of digital movies getting made have, like, that digital sheen to them they're kind of like they've got that digital cleanliness over the over the screen i don't know you know you either know what i'm talking about or you think i'm fucking crazy but when a movie's shot on digital you can tell and it's like there's a lot of false lighting in the movie to like make it appear darker and like blah 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 but anyways like the movie doesn't play with darkness a whole lot like every dark scene has a lot of like blues and purples into it like i mean you see that in other movies too but like even when she's out in the forest like i can see everything you know and i think if you would have played with darkness a bit more and put some dudes in gray alien suits for the scenes that were possible because the her whole first interaction with the alien i was like 
a dude in a suit could have done this and it would have looked so cool. It would have like really grabbed me and like kept me into the movie, but it's this digital like and it, I'm pretty sure it's like a mid-budget movie too. Like it didn't cost a ton of money, so the the CGI is not like fucking Marvel level, but um anyway, yeah, and then I, I understand there are some aliens later on that are like, yeah, you could not have done this practically. Like, you've got some crazy ideas of, like, aliens with huge long arms climbing over houses and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, that would have been really hard to do practically. But, uh, yeah, it, it looks very digital. I, I didn't love the designs of the aliens. Um and honestly, it, like, that was taking me out a lot. Like, because she has a lot of interactions with aliens. And they are all these just big digital, like, you know, whatever. And I was just like, that's not very thrilling to me. I don't know, like, these big, huge computer-generated monsters chasing someone around. You know, a lot of uh, great monster movies back in the day that had to do it practically, like Alien build a lot of suspense by not showing you the fucking monster. I mean, even Jaws, like everybody knows the story about that. But you don't show the monster that much. You play with darkness. You build suspense. By the time you get to see the monster, like it's a big boom. It's a big moment, you know. But she sees every alien very clearly. And it's like it wasn't that scary to me because I'm like, yeah, you're not going to kill – the main character 45 minutes in so like this cha- this huge chase scene where i'm seeing every pore of the alien isn't doing it for me but that's just that's that's me so anyway let's talk about the ending okay so the whole time this movie's building up to its one line of dialogue and it's building up to its like what the fuck happened with her friend What did you do to this friend of yours that made her mother spit on you, dude? What did you do? Well, spoilers again. She gets captured by the alien, okay? Should the aliens capture her, they bring her up into this flying saucer. And they've got her, like, strapped to a table or whatever. They're about to, like, do their shit. And one of the aliens, I think, touches her forehead. And then, boom, we're transported we're transported to this girl's memories, okay? We are inside her memories. She's inside her memories, walking around her memories. You know, she's like looking. There's police lights and there's, oh, there's the parents we saw earlier that are, they're really sad, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, fuck, did her friend die? I was like, oh, did her negligence cause her friend to die? Is that, is that what's going on? That's heavy. No, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Uh, We get to see what happened. Her friend pushed her. They're 12 years old, okay? Her friend pushed her, and she's on the ground after being pushed. Our main character, as a 12-year-old, sees a rock, picks it up, and fucking smashes her in the head. Kills her on impact. Our main character fucking murdered her best friend as uh, as a 12-year-old. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's fucking heavy. And I I didn't mention this, but our main character, like, I think her parents are dead or fucking some shit. And she lives alone in this huge house. Like, I guess it's not like mansion, you know, but it's like two stories, multiple bedrooms. Like, and she lives alone. Like, she's got her little trad wife set up. Like, she wears these floral dresses and... She's got these little models that she builds and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, yeah, so she's got this whole place to herself. Her parents aren't in the picture. She, like, I think she, like, does Etsy shit and, like, ships it off to people. And, like, that's how she makes a living. And I'm like, you know, power to you. But, like, she's got, she's living well. She's got a nice house. She's getting to do whatever the fuck she wants. Like, she's getting to, like, do this little side business to support herself. I'm like, you know. Cool that you can afford to do that. Anyway. But yeah, she murdered her best friend and is now just like in town living on her own, doing her Etsy, selling that stuff and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, 
dude, you murdered your best friend. I feel like we're skipping over that. And you're writing her these little cards. Turns out, like, you know, the movie tricks you because in the beginning, it's like, oh, she's writing her friend a letter. And it turns out she writes her friend a letter, letter like, on her birthday every year or something and then just keeps it, like, hangs it up on a little clothespin. And it's like, this is a letter I wrote you for your 18th birthday if you were alive, but I murdered you. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. You're, you never had repercussions for this? And the movie's trying to tug on your heartstrings. The movie's trying to make you, like, feel bad for her. And, oh, isn't, she's going through so much, blah, 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 blah. I'm like... Yeah, what about the woman who spat on you? I think she's going through a lot, too. You murdered her daughter, <laughs> you know? She, uh, I don't know, it's it, it's a complicated situation, I guess, and yeah, I, f- I feel a little empathy, but the whole movie is, like, really trying to make you feel bad for her until you find out, like, at the end of the movie, you find out what she did, and you're like, oh, fuck, This person that I've been, like, going on this journey with, that I've been rooting for to survive from the aliens, fucking killed her best friend. Like, that's pretty crazy. Well, then the end of the movie doesn't feel earned, like, at all. The the end of the movie, like, the aliens look at her memories, see that she murdered her best friend, and then the aliens are like, you know what? Go back to Earth. We feel bad for you. But you're they don't say anything because there's one line of fucking dialogue in the whole movie but the aliens are like they just send her back and you're like okay and earlier in the movie we see that the aliens are like they've got these little fucking they look like dragon fruit or something but these little dragon fruit things are like going into human bodies and like taking over human bodies so they're essentially taking over the human race and they were going to do that to her But once they see that she killed her best friend, they feel sorry for her and they send her back to Earth without putting a dragon fruit in her throat. And I was like, they feel, I was like, what? They feel bad for her because she killed her friend and now she gets to go back to Earth? And then the ending of the movie, it's her walking through town, like riding her bike through town and everybody is like waving at her because they're all aliens they're not people. They're all aliens, like, inside human bodies, waving at her, and they're all friends with her, and she's happy now, because finally the town accepts her, and then at the end of the movie, she's, like, at a block party with all these human aliens, and she's, like, dancing with them, and she's, like, looking at the camera, like, I'm so happy, blah, 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 and it's, like, it feels like it's playing it emotionally like it's trying to be like look she finally got what she wanted she's finally accepted and i'm like no girl you crazy i'm like no this this needs to be like a pearl ending like you need to be smiling crying looking into the camera like you are insane and the fact that you are like oh, I'm happy now because the aliens like me and the town doesn't... I was like, this movie needs to be playing this like she is crazy and it is like crazy of her to be happy now because that's the truth. I'm like, I don't feel good for her. I'm like, wow, she's crazy. And you know, maybe, maybe that's what the movie is doing. I just feel like with the use of the soundtrack and with the way the whole movie is leading up to like uh, uh, us feeling bad for her, I don't know, the whole time, like, when I found out that she murdered her best friend and we're supposed to feel bad for her, I was like, oh, like, my whole attitude changed toward the movie. And then the ending happens, and I was like, no, I'm not, like, I'm not happy for it. Like, am I supposed to be happy for you? Is that what this is, like, trying to evoke out of me? I don't know. That's just my, uh, that's just my two cents. Um... Overall, I didn't hate the movie. Um, I just think that it relied a little too much on the gimmick of the one line of dialogue. Uh, And that just annoyed me a little bit. And I didn't like the ending or the trauma that she had to get over. It was like, your trauma is you murdering your best friend. (laughs) Like, damn. Anyway. All right. I got one more movie I want to talk about and then I'll get out of here. 
Um, I watched another Alien movie. These all kind of just happened. So District 9 was the only one that was officially a part of the Monkey Movie Club Alien Invasion. The other two just kind of happened. Like I was like, I'm going to watch this. I want to watch this. And they're also about aliens. So this third one was on the Criterion channel. Uh, I love the Criterion channel. I've been watching their high school horror uh, category they have. The Criterion channel is great if you don't know about it. Criterion's a company. They restore movies and they sell these expensive Blu-rays of like re they rescan the original film of these movies and turn them into these beautiful digital copies. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. Uh, great little company. They also do interviews with actors and uh, directors and producers. And they yeah, every month they have a new like collection of movies that they will like give a tagline and all the movies kind of have something similar with them. Well, <clears throat> one of the ones for September was high school horror. And it's, as the name implies, a bunch of horror movies that have to do with high school. And this one I watched, uh, the faculty is fucking awesome. Uh, the faculty is a movie by Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez is a uh, homie who did, uh, I think it's, El, El Mariachi or, or something. Uh, he also, what was the name of his first movie? He had a, anyway, uh, he made From Dusk Till Dawn. He's like homies with Quentin Tarantino. He did the uh, Death Proof kind of double feature thing with Tarantino. Um, the Grindhouse, Grindhouse double feature thing with Tarantino. But yeah, he's, uh, I've never really watched much of his movies. I watched the Spy Kids. He also did the Spy Kids movies. I watched the Spy Kids movies as a kid. And uh, say what you will about those movies. They're so full of life and, like, creativity. And uh, they're fun. Like, you know, that's what I like about, from what I've seen of Robert Rodriguez. He also did Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Um, he's, you know, fun. He likes making fun movies. Um. But yeah, The Faculty, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, it's the first Rodriguez movie I've seen in a while. Um, he made it in, I believe, 1998. And it has a script by Kevin Williamson. He's the guy who wrote Scream. Scream 1 and 2, and I think came back for Scream 4. Uh, Kevin Williamson, yeah. Uh, he wrote these awesome horror screenplays. And... Uh, Let's just get into The Faculty. The Faculty is starring Elijah Wood, uh, what's his name, Josh Barnett, Barnett, uh, Garnett, Barnett. Uh, he was recently in Oppenheimer. I'll throw up a picture of him here. Uh, he's awesome. He's great in this movie. And like some of the posters you see, he is, you know, the headshot that they're trying to sell. <clears throat> but this movie is packed with actors from the 90s. Uh, it's got... It, it's got... Sama Hayek. It's got... Uh, what's his name? He I'll throw up a picture of this guy. But he's in Thelma and Louise. He's the bad guy in Happy Gilmore. Um, he's awesome. And he's like barely in the movie. Um, it's got the, the woman who plays Jean Grey in the X-Men movies. The older ones. Um, Jon Stewart plays like... A faculty member, which is crazy that Jon Stewart's just casually in this movie. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of people. I'll throw up pictures of these people. But um, So the cast is stacked. The script is awesome. Um, and Rodriguez just, I think, puts a lot of life and energy behind the camera. And it feels very 90s but in like the best ways possible. Like, uh, I love the way, like the costume design, like just looks like a bunch of nineties teenagers. Um, but the faculty, let me tell you a little bit about it. So the faculty is about the alien, this alien parasite that comes to earth and immediately the movie starts and boom, you're into it. And the parasite infects, one of the faculty members, the, the head coach of the football team. And <clears throat> the parasite is trying to spread. So what it does is like it gets other faculty members in one-on-one -on -one conversations in isolated areas, infects that faculty member, and then ba da ba da ba da ba just boom, it's trying to spread. 
all throughout the school. It's trying to take over the earth. And I can't, I can't remember who is the first one to notice something is wrong, but I think it's Elijah Wood. I think Elijah Wood is the one who kind of notices that something's a little off with some of the faculty members. And uh, he hides in a closet with this one girl. And they hear these two infected faculty members talking about spreading. They think they're alone and they're talking about spreading the parasite and blah, blah, blah. And then there's like a dead body in the closet and they freak out and blah, 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 blah. But <clears throat> it kicks off like, boom, like the movie just really throws you into it. It's got these awesome little uh, nameplates for all the characters that are introduced, like Elijah Woods, the nerd. And then it's like, Ching, there's his name. And it's like, this guy's the cool guy who's like, it's his second year being a senior ching here's his name this is the cool girl ching this is the new girl ching this is the goth girl ching and uh yeah i think a tagline that i read was like breakfast club meets invasion of the body snatchers and i haven't seen invasion of the body snatchers but yeah sounds sounds like an apt description uh, the William, the Kevin Williamson script, uh, has a lot of like kind of meta humor of like what it is similar to scream, you know, scream is talking about the slasher genre. And this movie talks about like these alien parasite movies, like invasion of the body snatchers. They might mention the thing once or twice. I don't remember, but it basically is the thing, but in high school, um, People are getting infected and these friends uh, figure out that they need to do something to stop this. And then they can't trust each other because some of them might be one of them and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, I guess I just love this like kind of paranoia in these films because like I mentioned earlier in the episode, I love John Carpenter's The Thing. And it's, I guess what I really like about those two this movie and that movie are how we become kind of our own worst enemy. Like, you know, the aliens bad and is like trying to spread, but like our own kind of paranoia that we build and like distrust of each other is really interesting to watch. And it's also like fun to have a little whodunit every once in a while of like, you don't know who's who and keeping track of that. It like keeps your brain engaged and it keeps you watching. And, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, super, super fun. Uh, the effects, for the most part, are pretty great. Um, there are a few moments towards the end where, like, there's the big bad fight. And the queen alien is running around and she's this big CGI alien. But something cool that they do that no one will save you does not do is that they also have a puppet, a big puppet for the queen alien so there are shots where it's like when we when we need to have it cgi blah 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 we will but when we can let's put this puppet in here and i think that's awesome i think that's what no one will save you kind of needed uh because i'm sorry but nothing beats nothing digital that you make effects wise will live up to actually having something shot in camera next to your actors. You know, it, it, it's leagues different like that. Uh, a, a movie in the nineties with these puppets can look better than your digital aliens that you're making in 2023, you know, but anyways, not to get on my practical effects soapbox. I know I can do that sometimes, but yeah, the faculty. It's fucking awesome. Uh, watch it if you can. I know it's on the Criterion channel. If you have streaming services, okay, cancel your Netflix. Netflix has nothing. If you are keeping Netflix for Stranger Things or something, just torrent Stranger Things. Who cares? Do not pay for that fucking service, especially with what Netflix is doing with their password sharing bullshit. Okay. Cancel your fucking Netflix, whatever you're, there are increasing prices. They're making it harder to access your own accounts. Cancel your fucking Netflix and get the criterion channel. The criterion channel, 
Uh, and I'm not trying to say this as like, you know, my film bro, whatever, it's got better movies. Netflix literally has just dog shit on a plate. And it's like, this is what you pay $20 a month for. Here you go. We have our own Netflix show about moms that want to fuck uh, other moms or something. And I, I don't know. That was a bad example. I think the I was thinking of MILF Manor, but I think that was a HBO show. Any, but w- whatever. Netflix has fucking sucked. They have a few things that are okay of their of their original lineup, but dude, they continue to give you horseshit every month. And then you'll put a movie in your list and it's gone the next month and you're like, "Oh, that's the one thing I wanted to watch on Netflix." And now it's fucking gone. Like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'll put something else in my list to watch later and then they'll take that off." Like, it's just so inconsistent and awful. And I hate you, Netflix, and I do not pay for you, and I never will. Um, but yeah, spend $10 a month on the Criterion channel. It, if you're afraid of like, I, and I used to have the Criterion channel, and I was always afraid to go in and watch something because uh, it's kind of intimidating. There's a lot of foreign films. There's a lot of like movies you've never heard of, and you're like, I don't know what to watch, blah, blah, blah. What I have found success in recently with the Criterion Channel is just go to the service, look at the collections that they have, that they're curating. Find a collection that you're interested in, the themes, like high school horror, or they did one recently of like AI-related movies. Click on those collections and watch those and just hit play. Don't even like sort through them and try to decide on one. Just hit play. I do this at night. I've been doing this where I watch a movie every night. Okay. I just go to a collection I like. I'll watch through the collection. I'll move on to another one that interests me. Go to a collection, hit play, start watching those movies. Okay. And I guarantee you, you will have a good time. I was interested in high school horror. I just went on it. I hit play and it played like this movie from the seventies that was called like the massacre at central high. And I had a lot of fun with it. I love high school horror. I love horror. I was pretty sure I would love high school horror and boom. Yeah, I did. And if you don't want to do that, go to popular now. And typically popular now has all of the big hit movies because that's what people are watching. Like a name that you'll recognize like Thelma and Louise or, you know, whatever, like go to popular now or just sort through the collections, see what you like, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Watch that. Stop paying for fucking Netflix. If you do pay for Netflix, Netflix is dog shit and is benefiting you in no way. Okay. Sorry, that's just my little rant. HBO Max is okay. Um, HBO's got some good stuff. Sopranos. Anyway, uh, if you got this far, I mean, fuck, thank you for watching the first episode of Monkey Movie Club. Uh, I know it was a bit, yeah, you know, I kind of went on my soapbox there at the end, and it was a bit disjointed, but I tried to keep a little structure, talk about these alien movies that I liked. And yeah, I didn't know if I would be able to ramble for an hour about these movies that I watch, but here we are. Um, Yeah, I had a lot of fun talking about this, and I'm surprised that I could pull this off. Uh, But thanks for watching. Um, Come back next week for another Monkey Movie Club video. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I want to keep doing it and talking about the movies that we watch every week. I think what I'll start doing is here at the end, I will tell you the movie we are watching this week so that you can watch it. And when the next episode comes out next week, you can hear me talk about the movie that we both watched. How's that sound? So we did something called the Banana Rama. I might have already talked about it. I don't remember. At the end of a month, we take all of the unused submissions put them on a wheel, spin the wheel, and boom, we have to watch that movie. We do that at the end of the month. I think it's a fun way to kind of get a wild card answer. Maybe you get one that literally nobody voted for, which is what happened this time. We had uh, we had three different themes. We threw all the movies on there that didn't get used. But An alien invasion movie got chosen, and it was one that got zero votes, and that is 
Cloverfield. Cloverfield, directed by Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves, I believe that's his name. He did the 2022 The Batman film. He also did, I think, the last two Planet of the Apes movies, War of the Planet of the Apes and uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Switch those. But yeah, uh, Cloverfield won. Got zero votes, but we put it on the wheel with all the other submissions that didn't get chosen, and boom, we are watching Cloverfield. So go watch Cloverfield. Um, I believe it is on Showtime's streaming service. It may be on Prime's, Amazon Prime streaming service. I'm not sure, but go to a secondhand movie store, get a DVD, get a Blu-ray, get a DVD or Blu-ray player, you know, and now boom, you have that movie forever. It will probably be like $5.99 or something. Watch the movie, come back next week, talk with me about it, you know, listen to me talk at least, Uh, leave a comment talking giving me your thoughts i'd love to hear from you and if you've happened to see district nine no one will save you faculty let me freaking know um leave a comment talk to me uh yeah thanks for tuning in to monkey movie club my name is chimp guy and i will see you in the next one